All right, today we're going to talk about ratios, rates, and conversions. And if you're watching this in the classroom, um, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you I made this video for YouTube because there's a couple Canadian references in there. My wife's Canadian, so we go up there on occasion. And uh, I apologize if you're Canadian. I do make a Toronto reference here. So if you're from Toronto, you're probably like, oh, cool, it's Toronto. If you're not from Toronto, you're like, oh, my God, can we have one moment without being reminded that that cesspool exists? But nonetheless... Uh, it's a CN Tower reference, so there is somewhat of a uniting factor there, I guess. Anyway, let's talk about rates, ratios, and conversions. In order to do that, we do, uh, first need to explore a little bit of the vocabulary. And I decided that it would be a fun idea to let blue take over the word vocabulary, so it came vocabulary. I don't know why I felt like I needed to do that, but I did. Anyway, if we talk about ratios... Um, we're talking about a comparison of two numbers by division, basically a fraction. So if I have four of something and three of another, I could make a fraction that says it's four over three. That's a ratio. I could also use the colon here, not the thing that you go to the bathroom with, but like the symbol. So four colon three, or I could say four two, three as well. Generally, we tend to use this form because it's a fraction, so that's pretty simple. So that's kind of where we head most of the time. So when you see ratio, you should think fraction. It also helps if you remember that a fraction involves division, but whatever. Um, a rate is a ratio that compares things measured in different units. Uh, stuff you might see, kilometers per hour, usually speed is measured in that way. Um, anything that has different units in one ratio, uh, feet per square inch or whatever. Anyway, uh, and a unit rate would be any rate where the denominator is one. And we're going to talk about using unit rates right now. Uh, the most often time that you would use something where we compare unit rates is when we're trying to find the best deal. Uh, everybody has that member of their family that constantly is a, like a huge coupon cutter. And you know somebody that probably got all their groceries for like a dollar because they're obsessed about going to wherever they go. Uh, they go to the grocery store, whatever, Giant Tiger, if they go to just pick up some random things. And they always know where to go to get good deals and blah, blah, blah. Those people are comparing unit rates whether they know it or not. So we're going to use the information to figure out which store has the best deal. So basically, we're converting the uh, rate that we're given into a rate where the denominator is 1. So at store A, they're selling two shirts for $25. So I'm going to make a rate out of that, $25 for two shirts. In order to convert that into a unit rate, all I have to do is divide 25 by 2 because that essentially essentially changes the denominator to a 1. So, for instance, if I have 4 over 2, it would change that into 2 over 1. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to take 25, I'm going to divide by 2, and I get $12.50 for one shirt. And by the way, we're going to assume that all these shirts are of the same quality, because otherwise, you don't know who has the best deal. Um, $49 for four shirts. 49 divided by four gives me 12.25. So it would be $12.25 per shirt. So one shirt. I don't know why we're at one shirt there. I noticed that just now. And in store C, store C is selling $35.00. For three shirts. 35 divided by 3. 11 and 2 thirds, so $11.67 more or less for one shirt. So essentially, my best deal is at store C because it's only $11, uh, 11 and 2 thirds dollars to uh, buy a shirt. So if you can get that deal per shirt, the per shirt best deal would be store C. Now, if you have to buy them in the group, that whole logic changes, but we're going to assume that you don't have to do that. Let's talk about, now that we've done rates and ratios, let's talk about conversions. When we talk about conversions, what we really mean is changing from one unit of measure to the other. Most likely, you'll see things like, um, I need to go from uh, maybe feet to inches, or maybe I need to go from meters to centimeters, have both systems, the customary and the metric. Uh, the big thing that you need when you're trying to do conversions is what's called a conversion factor. And I'm going to sweeten this video just a little bit simply by uh, trying to yap 
while I walk over and get a copy of a conversion factor chart that I already have. If you're in the state of Tennessee, all I'm doing is using the one from the Tennessee end of course test. But anyway, this section here has conversion factors in it. A conversion factor is a ratio of two equivalent measures in different units. So they give me things like one foot is 12 inches. So that would be the inches uh, feet thing. And if I need uh, meters and centimeters, it's actually much more convenient. I would do one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Now the thing about conversion factors is that you can use them either way. One foot to 12 inches is the same if I put the inches on top. So I can use the and same thing for 100 centimeters is one meter. Now I can use that to my advantage in the next section where we're going to talk about converting units. When I am converting units, which is when I want to go from one unit to another, the first thing I need to do is choose the appropriate conversion factor. The second thing that I need to do is set that up to eliminate the old unit or, or units, so to speak. So if I have 330 minutes and I need to convert that to hours. 330 minutes, and I'm going to put that over 1 for right now. Uh, now, I know that there are 60 minutes to 1 hour. My goal is to create a ratio uh, to eliminate minutes. So, for instance, if I was going to, let me uh, segue off to the side here for a second. If I do 3 times, uh, 3 over 5, or 3 times 5, and I divide by 5, what that does is I do 3 times 5 is 15, divide by 5, and it gets me all the way back to 3. If I do that in a fraction form, say I have 4 times 2 over 2, if I have a 2 on the top and the bottom, I could, I, by the way, I could do 4 times 2 is 8, divided by 2 gives me 4, or I could just eliminate something I have on the top and the bottom, and I'm just left with the 4. That's the process that we're going to use. The idea that you can eliminate something on top or bottom of a fraction as long as you have them on both edge. So if I have something in a denominator and the numerator, I'm good to go. So in this case, when I have my 3.30 minutes over one hour or over one, what I need to do is choose my conversion factor in a way that will eliminate minutes. And I need to put MI in there, otherwise it looks like 60 meters is an hour. If I put one hour up here and 60 minutes on the bottom, I'll have minutes on the top and minutes on the bottom. That's exactly what I want because that means the units will cancel. If I put minutes up here, so say I wrote 60 minutes up here, I would have minutes times minutes, which is minutes squared. So somehow we have two-dimensional minutes, which is this whole other weirdness. So instead, I'm going to choose 60 minutes on the bottom and one hour on top. So I have minutes here, minutes here, I can cancel. And then the math com becomes very easy. I just do um, 330 times 1 over 1 times 60, which you really end up getting 330 divided by 60, and it gives me 5.5 hours, or 5.5 hours. I can do it that way if I want to. Uh, if you want to set it up as a fraction, if your calculator can do fractions, do 330 times 1 over, I'm going to bring this up closer so you can see it, over 1 times 60. And it'll give you 5.5. And, and if you need to convert that to decimals, 5.5 hours. Now, let's do centimeters to meters. I'm going to change colors. 1,250 centimeters, and I need to go to meters. So the first thing I'm going to do is make that into a fraction over 1. And then I need to pick my conversion factor. We talked about this earlier, 100 centimeters in a meter. So in order to eliminate centimeters if it's on the top, I need to put that part of my conversion factor da -da -da, on the bottom, which should cause my overall value to go down. So you have centimeters here and here. Those eliminate. So I'm going to do 1 meter is 100 centimeters. So I need to do 1250 divided by 100. It gives me 12.5 meters. Very simple to set up. Let's do one that's a, a little bit more complicated, but not really. In this case, I need to convert 6 feet 7 inches just into inches. So I need to go ahead and split them out into two separate parts before I do anything else. I need to split the feet plus 
seven inches. So now that I have these plus seven inches left over, I need to worry about converting my six feet to inches. Now, so I'm going to do six feet over one, and I know that there are uh, 12 inches in one foot. If I were to put inches on the bottom, that will not help me in any way, shape, or form, because then I don't have feet squared over inches. That's ridiculous. So instead, I'm going to put one foot over 12 inches. Now I can work this out, and I get 6 times 12 divided by 1 if I want to, and ended up with that section equals 72 inches. So this part is 72 inches plus the 7 inches I had from before. So don't forget that. That's important. And you end up with 79 inches. Very simple. Just set it up, pick your conversion factor, uh, and try to eliminate the old unit or units. Uh, the last thing, well, not the last thing, I forgot. We're going to talk about converting units between systems. Now, we have customary uh, a lot of times in the U.S., or, uh, and then you have metric. Metric is the one that, if you're in Canada, you're probably using, or most of, the, most of the world uses metric, but we already bought all of our signs in the United States in customary, so we're going to stick with that, I guess, because it's more expensive to buy signs than it is to make it really easy on everybody else because, you know, base 10 and all that. But anyway, let's not get into that argument. So if I'm going to convert, I have a statement that says the CN Tower is about 1,815 feet tall. Uh, by the way, you can tell that I stole this from an American textbook because why on earth would a Canadian monument be measured in feet? It's like they converted it and then they give you the conversion and you have to go back. It doesn't make any real sense, but it is what it is. So here's the CN Tower in Toronto and it's shockingly um, clear. Every time I've seen it, it's always uh, really foggy or sometimes it's snowing. I had New Year's there a while back and it was snowing the whole time. Anyway, so we're going to say that the CN Tower 815 feet, because some American converted it, I guess. Now, or someone from England, or any of the United Kingdom. If one meter is about 3.28 feet, how many meters tall is the tower? So my conversion factor issue here, really, is if I can find something that compares meters and feet. And let's see if this actually has anything. That'd be so annoying if it doesn't. Okay, so... This says that one foot is the same as 0 0.3048 meters, but they give me this nice conversion factor here. I just have to be smart when I use it. I'm going to flip to this color. First, I'm going to set up my eight, uh, 1,815 feet or 1,815 feet over one. Then I need to make sure that I eliminate feet. So if I put the meters on the bottom, I won't eliminate feet. So I need to put the 3.28 feet on the bottom. 1 meters. By the way, the reason I showed you the uh, mathematics reference page is in case you are in Tennessee and you need to use it, it's available to you. Um, anyway, I need to set this thing up. So I do 1815 times 1 over 1 times 3.28. Or you could simply, uh, if you like it way easier than that, do 1815 divided by 3.28 and you get 5.53 or 553.4 roundabout meters. Now, the reality is you can't do full perfect unit conversion just because of the nature of how they're not exactly supposed to be related, but anyway, you get some basic idea that it's somewhere on the order of about 553 meters, which makes a lot of sense considering that uh, 1815 divided by 3 is somewhere, you know, if you did this times 3, it'd be close to this number. So that makes a lot of sense. Uh, the last thing we need to do is talk about converting rates. When I'm converting rates, as we talked about before, a rate is a ratio where the units are different. All I have to do is use multiple conversion factors and do the same thing I did before. In this case, a student runs the 50-yard dash in 5.8 seconds. How fast is this in miles per hour? So... The student ran 50 yards in 5.8 seconds. Now I need to find out what the conversion is to turn this into miles per hour. And I can do that using my conversion chart if I want. Let's see. There's the miles per yards thing. One mile is equal to 1,760 yards. If I 
want to get rid of yards, I can't put the yards on top. So that means I need to put the 1760 yards on the bottom, and that's one mile. From there, I need to make a second conversion, because this eliminates yards, but I still need to get rid of seconds and turn it into hours. Now, most of the time they expect you to know that uh, 60 minutes is in an hour, and then 60 seconds is in a minute. If you can work that together, you can see that there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. In case you don't know, I got this from the fact that 60 minutes is one hour, and then 60 seconds is one minute. So I multiplied them together and got 3,600. Now, um, I'm going to, since I'm eliminating seconds here, the only things left for me are miles per hour. So this should be actually sort of simple. I'm going to do 50, I'm going to do everything on the top first, 50 times 3,600, and I get this gigantic 180,000 thingy. And I'm left with miles as my unit over all the bottom part, 5.8 times 1760. And I get this really, uh, sorry, I don't know why I divided there. 5.8 times 1760, 10,000 208 and that would be hours so I just need to do this divided by this to get my final answer 1800 180,000 I'm sorry that's what it was right yeah 180,000 divided by 10208 and I get 17.63 miles per Hour. So that's it. That's rates, ratios, and conversions. So I hope you found something helpful here. And if you didn't, I apologize.